Hey there, this is Andrew and today we're going to be looking at input for SteamVR 2.0. I got a comment recently that talked about my old video now no longer working with the most recent plugin, so I guess we're going to take another look at it. And it's a good thing that we are, they've made some really big changes with the most recent plugin and it actually took a bit of figuring out, so hopefully you find this useful. And right now I'm in an empty project, I just opened it and cleared a few things out, and the first thing that we're going to do is naturally we're going to need to get the plugin. So you'll want to go to the asset store. If you're like me, you've already set it up. And we're going to be particularly looking at the version 2.0.1 that was released late September of 2018. And if we scroll up, we're just going to go ahead and import that into our project. All right, so now that we have the plugin imported into our project, let's go back to our scene view. And let's look at the Steam VR folder. And one of the big things that been, has been added is this entirely new input system, which uses a new action system. And we're going to go ahead and look at a new PDF that they included with this because I think the new interaction system, or the input system, was so crazy that like we need a whole PDF for this. So let's go ahead and open that so we can skim through it really quick. And I'm not going to read this entire thing to you. We're just going to kind of quickly scroll through here so we can get an idea of what we're going to be working with. And the really big change that they've made is they sort of created a decoupling system for separating actual inputs from actions. And what we'll be doing now is we'll be creating actions within your project, and then you'll be binding those actions to particular pieces of inputs. It's more of an involved process, but it works better for users who may have different controllers. And it will be much easier for them to rebind things. And we'll see a little bit more of that when we actually go through the process. But other than that, not a ton has changed. If we go through here, we can still have six different types of inputs. So we have booleans for buttons, singles for those values on triggers that can be a value between 0 and 1, vector 2s for touchpads, vector 3, which isn't used a whole lot, pose and skeleton, which I don't really use a whole lot. But each of those has a definition right through here if you want to learn a little bit more about those. But one thing they did include for each of the actions is action sets. And this is really great if you have multiple sort of instances that your player can do things. So let's say they are walking around and they can pick things up, but there may be also times where they're in a vehicle or in a cockpit or something like that. And you may need to find a new whole set of actions for that. And what these action sets does is contains a bunch of actions that you can basically toggle on and off. So it's a really great way to organize what your player can do at a particular point in time. They've also added a lot of new windows for testing input and setting it all up. And we're going to be taking a look at this in just a second. But this is only about 10 pages. But let's go ahead and go back into Unity. So let's go ahead and look at that new Steam VR window. So if we go over to our window, we're going to go to our Steam VR input. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to be creating some our JSON for our actions. So let's go ahead and hit yes. And the plugin has already gone ahead and loaded some of the basic binding files for these actions to inputs. But let's go ahead and clear that and let's not worry about it too much. So what this window already has is a few action sets that are already set up. We have our default, our platformer, as well as a buggy thing. Not exactly what, what that is, but if we can go ahead and click through here and each of these will have different actions. I believe the buggy, yes, it's just gonna be for a sort of vehicle controls. But primarily we're going to be looking at default here. Each of these actions is very similar to how they were before, where each action can either be a button press where it has an up state and a down state, or it's a value between 0 and 1, or it's a vector 2, kind of like how I just mentioned before. But if we go through here, we can see that each of these actions have a few things for them. So it has a name, a type, and if it's required or not. And that's sort of like when a user is rebinding the action, you need to make sure that they are rebinding it because it is absolutely necessary for them to progress through the game. Like if you have to teleport, you need to make sure that they are rebinding your teleport to a particular button. But for each of these actions, the big thing is going to be the type, Boolean primarily being for buttons. And if we click through here, we'll realize that a lot of these are actually buttons, with the exception of the squeeze here, which is going to be a vector 1, which is going to be that value between 0 and 1 for the trigger. But just as an example, if I wanted to go ahead and add my own action, I can go ahead and hit this plus here. And we're going to create a, a vector 2 for the touchpad touch. And usually you would want to give it an actual action name. 
like move or crouch or something like that. Those are probably not very good examples, but let's go ahead and just call this touchpad touch because we're going to be getting the touch value of the touchpad, which makes sense for right now. So once we've done that, we're going to want to change the type from Boolean to a vector2 because it does have a x and a y value for the touchpad. So let's go ahead and click that and let's go ahead to save and generate. All right, so now we have our actions. And as of right now, we necessarily don't have any functionality for each of these actions. And we've also haven't bound these actions to any actual input. So let's go ahead and do that. And we can do that by going to open binding UI. And this is gonna open something in your web browser. It's gonna be on a local host, but it's gonna open in whatever your default web browser is. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this. And once that's been opened, this is what you should see. As of right now, I'm not logged into Steam, so that's why I'm getting Steam is not available. But right now I have my regular Vive controller connected and we have our default Vive controller binding that comes with the plugin. So let's go ahead and edit that. And you'll be presented with this screen, which basically has each of our action sets that were created by the plugin. And we'll currently have how each of these inputs here are bound to our actions. And as an example, right now our trackpad is being used as a button. And if we click it, it's going to access that teleport action. And same thing for the grip. And if you remember, each of the values on those actions were Booleans, meaning they can be used as buttons. And for our trackpad, we gave it a vector two for our touch. And since that is not a Boolean, obviously, we're gonna to need to set our trackpad up as, a, as an actual trackpad and not a button. So if we go ahead and hit this plus here, we're gonna be able to use our trackpad as things that are a not a button, but in this case, a trackpad. So if we go ahead and click that, we're gonna be given these extra fields for clicking the trackpad, touch, as well as position. And if you remember, we set our new action to touchpad touch. So if we go ahead and click that, it'll set it up right there. One thing to note is when you're making these changes that having mirror mode checked to make sure that both controllers are using the same actions. And you may want to not have that clicked if you want the left and the right controllers to have different functionality. This binding setup also has an input debugger and can also let you change a few of the settings of your bindings. So in this case, we have the ability to invert our Y axis or our X axis, seeing that it's the touchpad. So let's go ahead and close this out and let's go ahead and replace our default binding. So we go ahead and click save. It's gonna create that JSON file to put into our project. And one way of us actually being able to look at that is if we can show our developer output this is basically what is going to be imported into Unity, which has our action sets and then each of our actions and its binding. And that's about it for that. There's a lot to process here, so spend a bit of time playing around with this. But for now, let's go ahead and hop back into Unity, where we're now actually going to write some code, where we can actually take those actions that we created and their bindings and then actually set up some functionality for them. So let's go ahead and just dock this really quick. Let's go over to our project and we'll create a new script and we'll just call this vibe input. And let's go ahead and open that up. All right, so now that we're in our vibe input script, the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is actually add the valve VR namespace up at the top. So we'll be using valve.vr. This is gonna give us access to all of the Steam VR actions that we're gonna be needing. So let's go ahead and reformat this and we're gonna be keeping our update for this. And we're gonna be doing this a couple different ways. And I think the first thing we're gonna do is maybe the more sort of obtuse, but a little bit more straightforward way, where it's gonna be that the simple if statement that we're gonna be testing the down state of our grip or the teleport. I think we'll do the teleport first. So let's write if, not of, and it's gonna be steam vr underscore input default. If you remember, our action set is one of them is named default. So we're going to be accessing that one, our in actions, and then teleport. A teleport, if you remember, is going to be, I don't think I explicitly said it, but it's going to be our touchpad. But I'll also do the grab grip so you can see that as well. And then once we've defined our action, we want to say if we want to get the state up or down, like regular input. So we'll do get state down 
And then we have to give it an input source, whether it's going to be our left, our right controller, or any of them. So let's write steam vr underscore input source. And this is going to be an enum input sources. And we're going to be using any. So we're not necessarily going to care if it's the left or the right controller. And that's a really basic way of testing an action for input. And just so we can get a better idea of this teleport, I'm going to go ahead and open up that binding again. So hold tight really quick. So now we're back in our binding window and we're going to take a closer look at this touchpad button. That for the click, for it being used as a button, our click is going to be our teleport action. So hopefully you're sort of getting the connection that we have between the binding menu, our actions, and then our actual functionality. Same thing for our trigger that's going to be used as a button, which is going to be the action grab pinch. So we're going to be setting that one up next. So let's go back into Visual Studio. So we have this teleport get state down from any of our buttons. So let's go ahead and make a print statement that we'll just call this teleport down. And now let's just create an upstate for our grippy grabby thingy. I can never remember the name of it. So let's go ahead and we'll just cut that. I believe it's grab pinch for the trigger. So let's go ahead and hit that and then we'll paste again. So we'll have our inactions, our grab pinch and our get state down from anything. Well, we'll change this to up actually. So we can test both of those and we'll just call this grab pinch up. All right, and this is very basic. This is just button input. So now we actually, maybe we wanna get our trigger value or that touchpad value that we just created. And we're going to be using a different way than how we've been doing it for these two if statements here for these other two. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a public steam VR action. And we're going to be using single. Now for each of the actions, it's going to have a different class for each of the return values, basically. And for this case, for our single, it's going to be that squeeze action on the trigger. So actually, let's go back into that binding menu so we can actually look at that again. So for our trigger, when we're using it as a button and we click it down, it's going to be this action. But we're going to be setting up when it's being used as a trigger. And when we pull it, we're going to want to have the squeeze action. And what this is going to do is actually return the value of how much the trigger has been pulled down. One more time back in Visual Studio. So now we're in the middle of creating this action and we're going to go ahead and just call it squeeze action for simplicity. And having it as, as a public field up here, it's going to enable us to be able to change it from the inspector. And we'll do that once we've set up both this, this single action as well as our vector two action for our trackpad. So we can also go ahead and do our public steam VR action vector two. And we'll just call this, we'll call it touchpad action. Now let's go down here and create a couple if statements for those. And since these aren't buttons, we're not going to have the normal if statement. What we're going to have is a value to sort of store the value that we're getting from that action. So if we have a vector, well actually we'll start with our single. So if we have a float, we'll be calling it our trigger value. And we'll be setting it to our squeeze action dot get axis. And we'll be just passing any controller. And what this is going to do is it's just going to get that value from the squeeze action, which is currently mapped to our trigger. And we'll just have a quick if statement here to print something out if the trigger value is greater than zero. Just like that. Now let's go ahead and do the same for our touchpad action, where we're going to be returning a vector too. So we'll just call this touchpad value and it's going to be equal to our touchpad action dot get access. And we'll do the same for our touchpad value with if our touchpad value is not equal to zero, then we'll want to print it out. So it'll be just be our touchpad value is going to not equal victor two dot zero. And then we'll just want to print that out. Just like that. 
All right, and that about does it for the actual code for this project. Let's actually go back into Unity so we can set these two actions up. But as I'm talking, I literally just remembered one thing that you may want to do is use a SteamVR default action. And this sort of makes sure that when you are creating new actions and regenerating all those files that we did at the beginning of the video, this is going to stay the same. So if we go here, it'll be our Steam default action. And it's going to give us this description here. It'll say sets up a default action to be assigned to this field or property on action generation must be on a prefab or in a scene in build settings. And this can be a bit iffy. It may not take the first time. So just be kind of patient with it. So what we can do is just add the name of the action here. And if I get this right, it should be squeeze. Squeeze is such a strange word. But anyway, let's go back into Unity. All right, so now that we're back in our Unity, let's go ahead and go to our scene view, and we'll just drag in our camera rig prefab so we can just have our controllers in there. I don't know if it's necessary, but let's just go ahead and do that. And we'll just drag in our camera rig, and we'll also need to put in our action. So I'll just put this on a separate game object for the time being. Reset the transform, drag our script on there. And if you remember, we set up those two public Steam VR actions. So we have our squeeze action and our touchpad action. And if we go to our squeeze action, we're only going to be given the actions that match that value. And we have that value from that throttle action set that comes with the plugin. And then we have the one that comes with the default one, which is what we're going to be mapping it to. And then we have our touchpad action, which we're going to be setting that to our touchpad touch. We're actually going to want to also activate our action set on load. So if we go to our add component, let's go ahead and type in Steam VR action set on load. And we're going to be wanting to set it to our default set. And what this is going to be great for is that you can have it activate on start and deactivate and then disable it between scenes or have different sets for each scene that you have. All right, and I think we're almost done. So let's go ahead and go up to our window again. And we're gonna go ahead and open up this Steam VR input live view so we can make sure that our controller is actually giving input. And we'll just drag that over here. And we'll just wanna scroll down to our any and see if any of our actions are taking place. So let's go ahead and hit play. So let's go ahead and clear out our console. And let's go ahead and try our, our touchpad value which if I touch the touchpad, we're gonna be getting a value based on where my thumb is on the touchpad as a vector two. Let's go ahead and clear that. And if I pull the trigger, we're gonna have a value for the trigger in between zero and one. But if I go ahead and try and pull the trigger all the way, I should, if we can find it, <laughs> we'll get a that get state down for that grab pinch action that comes with the plugin. And then let's have another one. If we actually click down on the thumb pad really quick, we'll have a few values, but if we see if we can find it, if we scroll up a little bit, we'll have our teleport down. And then as all this is happening, if we look over here to the right, you can see when I'm either touching the touchpad, I'm pulling the trigger, or when I'm actually clicking it, the touchpad that is for the teleport. And then if I'm pulling the trigger all the way and I'm getting the grab pinch and it's setting between true and false. All right, and I think that about does it for SteamVR 2.0 input. I know it's a lot to take in, so if you have any questions or concerns, or I don't know why you would have any concerns, but most likely questions, feel free to leave a comment below. But I've also just recently set up a Discord server, so if you'd like to ask your question there, you're more than welcome to, and I'll have a link in the description below. Hopefully I'll see you there, but I think that's all for now. And before I go, I just wanted to say that this video is brought to you by Big Apple Buddy. Big Apple Buddy is a shopping concierge service that helps people around the world buy from US online stores. They'll take care of your entire purchase so you don't have to lift a finger. Simply get in touch and they'll send you a free quote for your items within 24 hours. If you decide to go ahead with your purchase, they'll purchase the items for you and send them right to your door. And for your first purchase with Big Apple Buddy, you can get $10 off your first purchase by using the code ANDREWVR. You can use this for purchasing VR tech like the Samsung HMD Odyssey or my new personal favorite, the Oculus Go. And that's about it for now. I'll see you all in the next video.